first up, we're going to zone in on the election. Believe it or not, 29 days to the election, the campaign taking an ugly tone. Exhibit A, Governor Sarah Palin leveling some uh, pretty serious attacks against Senator Barack Obama. In this clip, uh, playing up his ties with political radical William Ayers. According to the New York Times, he was a domestic terrorist and part of a group that, quote, launched a campaign of bombings that would target the Pentagon in our U.S. Capitol. And then there's even more to the story. Barack Obama says that Ayers was just someone in the neighborhood, but that's less than truthful. His own top advisor said that they were, quote, certainly friendly. In fact, Obama held one of his first meetings of his political career in Bill Ayers' living room. There you go. Let's get a couple things on the table. Yes, Ayers is a domestic terrorist. That's according to the FBI. And he and Obama had a working relationship in Chicago. But CNN found that Obama and Ayers have not been in touch for years. So some of you saying the latest attacks, dirty politics. Others of you might be saying, hey, politics as usual. I I'm kind of on the ladder. We're 29 days away from a very tight race. And uh, this is what you're going to see, I think. Joining me now to talk about this, political strategist, registered independent, John Avlon. Also with us, conservative columnist and reporter for townhall.com, Amanda Carpenter, and Jank Uger, host of the liberal radio talk show, The Young Turks, on XM Satellite Radio. And again, we're taking your calls at 1877 tell hln All right, Amanda, let's start with you. Is this what John McCain has to do? Do they have to sharpen the attacks now? Yeah, absolutely. This is October and they're getting into really strong waters here. And I think Sarah Palin is absolutely right to bring this up. The New York Times article said that Barack Obama has downplayed his connection to Barack Obama. And even this morning, Obama's campaign uh, guru, David Oxrod, admitted on CNN that you know at the time that Barack Obama started uh, meeting with William Ayers, he didn't know that he was engaged in these violent, he had this violent history. So right now, we do not know when Barack Obama finally became aware of this fact, and I think he should be made to answer that question in the debate. Okay, Jank, I'll get your take in just a second. I want to read first off uh, Barack Obama's response to all this. He says, uh, this is a guy who lives in my neighborhood. The notion that somehow is a consequence of me knowing somebody who engaged in detestable acts 40 years ago when I was 8 years old somehow reflects on me and my values. It doesn't make much sense. All right, Jank. Uh, is, does it hurt your candidate when the name Ayers or Reverend Wright, any of those names are mentioned, especially this late in the game? Uh, I don't think so at all. I think it shows absolute desperation. Uh, I just moved into a new place, so I got to go knock on all my neighbors' doors and say, hey, what'd you do 40 years ago? <laughs> it's ridiculous. I was on a board for to help disabled veterans once. Right, do I know who's on that board? I have no idea. They could be axe murderers on that board. I have no idea. Now, look. This is a white flag of surrender from John McCain saying, I don't want to talk about the economy because I'm terrible at the economy. All right, so John. I want to change the conversation to something ridiculous and something that happened 40 let's, years let's ago. Let's get the independent in on this. John, who do you think is scoring here? If it goes negative, does McCain score by bringing up the name of Ayers? Look, undecided voters often do react to cultural undertone attacks. That's why they're used, because they're effective. But there's no question this is desperate, it's dishonorable, and it's divisive. And we need to stop relitigating the 1960s in our elections. We've got real problems in this country, and this is a directing attempt, not saying folks on what voters really want, which is solutions to the problem we face. Okay, let's hit, let's hit a phone call. Barbara in Oregon. Barbara, what do you think of all this? Uh, how the things are changed, the tone's changing a little bit, Barbara. You yes. with us? Go ahead, Barbara. Yes, I am. I would like to say that I think McCain and Palin are both using this to distract the American people from what's really going on in our own economy and the lack of experience of Sarah Palin. And I also believe that since what she pulled in the town of Wasilla while she was mayor, I, when she had uh, that big sporting thing built, right. I well, can't, you know, it's like she went ahead even though she was told that not all the ground belonged to the city, that it was privately okay. owned. She said, go ahead and break ground. All right. Well, she Barbara, we, we, again, I, I hear your point that you want the, the candidates to, uh, to get back to the issues. Amanda, what about that? I do say, uh, agreeing somewhat with Barbara here, McCain's got to get better on the economy. He has to have a plan, uh, and we need to hear it, don't you think, tomorrow night in this debate? 
Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's going to be a big part of the debate. But I do want to talk about what I think is an interesting strategy coming up with the McCain campaign, <coughs> talking about uh, William Ayers, having ads about Resco, and even having the legal arm of the Republican National Committee question Obama's foreign donations, which they believe are, have been illegally made to his campaign. So all together, these three things kind of you know put forth the notion that Obama is this unscrupulous individual that shouldn't be trusted. That I think plays into a lot of fears people, a uh, lot of the American public has about him being president. <laughs> <laughs> They're desperate. I mean, look at what she's saying. This is absolutely ridiculous. And by the way, the Associated Press, when Sarah Palin said the same thing, said it was racially tinged and was fear-mongering. No, and Amanda, not. I think the you're doing the same thing. The fact that Barack thing. Obama's presidential campaign may have violated federal campaign law by accepting foreign donations is an yes. absolutely critical issue and it needs to be looked into. Here's Go ahead, John. The independent comes in. Let's let John get in, you guys. Go Amanda ahead. just showed her card. She said it plays to a lot of the fears the American people have about candidacy. The fear-based politics is what's got to stop in America. Independent voters are sick and tired of the predictable, harsh hyperpartisanship, which tears concerns. down our country at the advance of personal advantage. Go ahead, Amanda. Independent voters should rightly be concerned and fearful of a president that associated with a known terrorist and has not been made to answer for it. Okay, you guys, let's... Uh, uh, the Obama campaign has come back at John McCain uh, talking, bringing up the Keating Five. Let me get a couple of facts out there about Keating Five, just to refresh everybody's memory. Then we'll hear uh, part of that ad. Charles Keating, owner of an Arizona Savings and Loan, late 80s, right after uh, John McCain won in Senate seat, he and four other senators met with regulators on Keating's behalf. Uh, Keating went to prison. Uh, the Senate Ethics Committee cleared McCain of wrongdoing, said he showed poor judgment. He's not convicted of anything. McCain went on to say uh, his involvement was the worst mistake uh, of his life. So that lays that groundwork. Let's hear the Obama ad uh, going against McCain. Many of our fellow citizens apparently believe that your services were bought by Charles Keating. The Keating Five involved all the things that have brought the modern crisis. Amanda, bringing up Keating Five, does that hurt McCain? Well, I think it can potentially, if Obama can effectively parlay that into an attack on the current economic crisis where, you know, the government was betrayed by unscrupulous ties uh, to uh, people who shouldn't be trusted. But I think by opening this door, McCain does have a better answer for it because he can then talk about um, his... Uh, work to reform Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae and also point out that he followed through on his uh, uh, public financing campaign offer to accept the public money and also worked for campaign finance reform. Hey, Jane, do you, don't you want Barack Obama and his campaign to stay above the fray? You're leading now. Do you need this or is this something that they have to go to? Well, here's the thing. It's directly pertinent. If it was in uh, John McCain's personal life, I'd agree with you completely. But here's a financial scandal, just like the one we're having now. John, John McCain wasn't on a board with Keating. He wasn't John Ke uh, Charles Keating's uh, neighbor. He was one of the Keating Five. He was one of the five senators that got reprimanded for this. It and couldn't exactly. be more relevant. No. Look, here, here, here's what's the truth, is Go that ahead, the John. Senate found him not guilty of any wrongdoing. That's the beginning and end of this. The SNL crisis is pertinent to our economic environment today. But the, John McCain expressed deep remorse for ever being knowing Charles Keating, and he was found by the Senate for not being guilty of any wrongdoing. So, no, it's not legitimate. It's a distraction as well. Okay. No, but he never learned the right lessons, John. I understand what you're saying. He was reprimanded, but if you because want to say he was hey. going... Found not guilling, Hold on, I get you guys, that, real quick. Didn't learn the lesson. Guys, before we let you go, real quick, Jank, about 15 seconds. What do you want to see from your candidate Obama tomorrow night in that debate? Stay cool, calm, and collected as, be, as he has been throughout. I think he's doing a great job. He just needs to deliver that same message. Amanda, what's McCain have to do? Take risks, knock Obama off his game, and make him answer questions that haven't been answered, you know, like to, that have to do with his involvement with William Ayers. What do you want to see as the independent? Obama should return to this postpartisan rhetoric of his primary, and John McCain's got to show empathy and understanding about the economy, and they should elevate the game, not drag this debate down. There you go. John Avalon, Amanda Carpenter, Jank Uger. Nice job, the three of you, once again. We appreciate your time, appreciate your calls as well, and a reminder for the latest political news at any time, check out the political ticker at CNNPolitics.com. We just kind of touched on Let's get back to our money. Wall Street's reeling. Another huge sell-off today. And get this number. 59% of Americans now say another depression is likely. Haven't we hit rock bottom yet? And what does this all mean for you and me? CNN's Ali Velsh is going to have some answers for us. You want to stick around for that. And the O.J. Simpson jury fesses up. They didn't really listen to what witnesses had to say. Still convicted him. We'll explore that. And uh, here's a name we haven't heard in a while. Drew Peterson? Oh, yeah. 
the, a new book says he was deceptive in a lie detector test, talking about uh, his missing fourth wife, Stacy. Are you surprised? I'm not. Call and be heard. Sound off. You know the number, one eight seven seven. tell hlm